Hi, this is John McKenna. This is a short video clip of some bronze casting using a small crucible, lift out crucible from a small furnace. Now, here we are shutting the furnace down, and I'm just over to a kiln which is red hot at 850 degrees C, and we've got a shell in it. And this hot shell we will pour the molten bronze into. We like to pour the molten bronze into a hot shell because it allows the bronze to go in without chilling too quickly and freezing. It's still very hot, but it, it actually solidifies as metal. So if it's a hot shell, it doesn't freeze so quickly. And in this particular shell, it's some cow's heads, which have got horns and ears. And you want the bronze to search out the detail of those sculptures. Here we are, just about to take the lid off the furnace. This allows me access to the crucible. I need to skim the top of the liquid bronze. It usually has dross on the top and detritus, impurities that float to the top. You use a skimmer to skim it off. It's quite important you do this. Those impurities, that, that dross, if you pour the bronze and, and it pours into your mould, that, that bronze with the dross in it could run into some detail, some detail of the sculpture, fine detail, and it, and it, and it means it doesn't cast very well cause you a lot of problems on the sculpture. So you try and get as much of this box out as you can. Now we're going to use some scissor lifting tongs to lift the crucible out of the furnace. As it comes out the bronze in the crucible is about 1100 degrees C and we place it into a ring shank ring lifting shank that fits snugly around the crucible. The guy there has just got a tool to stop any dross that I might not manage to fish out. Stop any going to go into the mould there. Pour nice and steady and slowly pouring carefully as the bronze goes in the air comes out you'll see the bronze pushing pushing the air out and it rises up through those little risers around the edge of the mold there. You can see that the bronze has poured successfully through the whole of the mold. As the bronze came to the top of that. Then we of course make sess into an ingot. That looks as though on this occasion I'm making a simple base, circular base. Just pouring the remaining bronze into some slightly damp sand. Not too damp, that's all the water and steam away and bubble. You can see that lug on the ring shank there, that stops the crucible from falling out as we turn the crucible over to, to drain the bronze out. You have to care for the crucible, after you finish a pour there's always a little bit left in the bottom and you like to get that out and scrape it carefully. You can see it's actually solid, going solid already, freezing. The molten metal is already all so much it's solid. And got to clean the clean crucible out as much as possible because anything left in there could be ne the next time you melt, that could be part of the detritus and the dross that's floating on the top. So try and clean, clean the crucible out as much as possible. Then out of the ring shank. Using the scissor lifting tongs again to put the crucible back in the furnace. And it allows the crucible to cool down at the rate of the furnace cooling down and, and it sort of preserves its life. Once the lid's back on the furnace, it's finished for the day, so we'll make sure that uh, gas lines are switched off. Now, I think uh, over in this corner here we've got a few um, of these cow's heads that we'd cast earlier and they'd cooled down so we can just sort of get a little picking tool and start knocking the shell off knock out stage and you go and pick this stuff off with little tools like that once you've got the most of it off then you put them into a sandblasting cabinet and bead blast them that's the start of the fetting process